All right, guys, my guest has it has been her mission to curate safe spaces to have hard conversations. So I hope she's ready for this conversation, especially in urban and other underserved communities. In 2017, she found it stronger than my struggles, a mission based organization with a focus on mental health and wellness. And she's also the winner of the Literary Trailblazer of the Year Award. Indie Author Legacy Award, and she's here tonight in our talk of the town, and it's going on. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Melanie Hill. Hi, thank you so much for having me. How you doing? I'm good. How are you doing today, Finch? I'm good. You looking for a husband, too? No, but I'm single, but no husband for me. I don't want one right now. Okay. You don't want a husband, but you are single. Yes. Okay. Okay. So so stronger than my struggle. Amen. This has been your mantra for quite some time. Uh, and I got to ask before we get to uh, the things, the secrets of the recipe you're going to share tonight. Um, how did you become stronger than your struggles? Because I've read a little bit of your story. You can share it with our audience today. But how did you become stronger than your struggles? Well, you know, Finch, like many others, I really didn't have an option. You know, if you're going to wake up every day, you got two choices. Either you lay down or you fight, right? Mm -hmm. So I come from a background of so much tumultuous things from uh, domestic violence to child molestation to having a mother who neglected me. And growing up, I just didn't have the things that I needed to mm -hmm. make it in society. And once I got on my own, it just was so many things coming at me. You know, as a young woman, you know how the world can treat you, right? Right, right. So there were so many things coming at me and having me going all over the place. And I got lost and derailed. And, you know, I went down the porn path for a while and all kinds of things. Wait, 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 wait. Hey, wait, I'm not finished my answer. And wait, so wait. Oh, I'm not finished my answer. In the great words of our vice president, I'm talking. <laughs> wait. I'm talking. <laughs> Did you say porn so pain? I went down that path briefly, you know, and then I realized that while I was down that path, that it really wasn't me. But because I had got diagnosed with having this multitude of mental illnesses, mm -hmm. that it was like a different version of me. And so once I was able to, like, get some help and, you know, figure out who I really wanted to be. I realized how strong I was and I was stronger than every struggle that came my way. And so that's how I got here today. Now you can ask the porn question. Go ahead. Why, why did you bring that up in the middle? What you were saying? I mean, because you asked about my struggle. And so I have to make it clear exactly who I am and where I come from, because I want you to know that my greatest struggle in the last 10 years has literally been getting women to go mm -hmm. from seeing me as some whore to their role model. From That's getting women to see me as some chick that has millions of views on Pornhub to someone who transitioned their life to a life of purpose to seeing me as someone who now has created the lifestyle that I have desired and deserved and can teach them the same. You won't see many women who come out of the industry and are able to transition the way I did successfully. Um, and even when I was, you know, transitioning. I got featured by Time Magazine. You don't hear women coming from my background who talk mm -hmm. like that. So it, it's important to let women who feel like maybe that's been their struggle mm -hmm. and that they don't have a future to know that I come from that place. Just like I come from a place of domestic violence. Just as like I come from a place of mental illness. Just like I come from a place of prostitution on the street as a young girl. To let them know that there's nothing that they can't have, like the young lady was saying before me, mm. success is open to each of us if we define mm. what it is in our own. I'm glad you said that because, you know, I hear a lot of times people talk about choices they made and they're blaming everything on the choice, not looking at the fact that they could make a different choice and then that changed the trajectory of their life. So I love the fact that you're not ashamed to talk about having a past because everybody has a past. Everybody has a history. And so e even if your decision wasn't somebody else's decision, you still we've all still made decisions that didn't put us on the 
on the track that we probably anticipated in life. Because I'm pretty sure you didn't grow up saying, oh, I want to be a porn star. Oh, I want to be a prostitute. Oh, I want to do but this. Believe it or not, that. it is where I thought I would be mm. as a teenager. And it's where I thought I would end up. I just didn't think I would get past it. You see, I had a mother who wouldn't take care of me. Mm -hmm. So at the age of 15, I started prostituting because she said, I'll buy you deodorant when your father pay child support. Whoa. So wow. understand that as a young child, I was forced in the street. And as I got older, I found out that the man who had molested me didn't just do that behind my mother's back. He had a permission. So understanding that the woman who chastised me for being a whore created the whore, mm -hmm. you know, and then forced me to have to take care of myself when she refused. You know, I never thought I would be anything but a whore. So the idea that I was able to get out of the lifestyle that it seemed I was groomed for mm -hmm. and to create this lifestyle now where I live a life of abundance. I go wherever I want. I, I have anything I could think of and all because I dared to be more than anything anyone think I could be to be stronger than my struggles. Mm. Hmm. Did you just give them that? Did you? Didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so, uh, yeah, let's let's talk about that for a second because I think that's great, and that's just the thing that I like to tackle um, in these conversations because you're looking at your life now. How long did you spend in the porn industry? Ten years, believe it or not. A decade. Okay. Uh, how, how many years did you spend uh, prostituting yourself? Man, if you look at the time that I've been in the sex work thing, I think it's literally been, I claim since the age of eight when my molester started paying me. Mm, okay. But okay. since the age of 15 when my mother forced me and I'll be 40 this year. Okay. All right. And so, so for people who may have a similar story or their struggles are something completely different, what would you say to them? Because it took some fortitude of your mindset. It took you realizing because you, you, you talked about, hey, I was, this is the life I thought I was supposed to have based upon my environment. So mm -hmm. how did you go from, let's see, 10, 12, 13 years in the sex working field to, hey, I can have something different if I just make a different choice? You know, the thing is that I always had a foot in both worlds. See, I'm really intelligent, right? But because my mother forced me out in the street, I was in the street. Mm -hmm. It never was my option, my choice. It was the way I had to take care of myself. So even when I had a good job, like I would migrate back because it was what I knew, even mm -hmm. though it wasn't my truth, you know? And so it was never something that I was caught up in. It was something I was raised in. But the more, you know, I could find freedom to get away, the more I tried to get away because it's never what I wanted to be. It's the only option I seem to have. It was what you was forced to be in, in some regards. Yeah. Um, um, and, and that's so unfortunate because there's a host of, there's a thousands of yous right now experiencing that. And um, it's unfortunate that I was just having this conversation about how oftentimes some parents weaponize their children. And in, in your case, it's like, Hey, you, I'll buy you the order when your father pays child support. What does that got to do with the child? That's a direct quote. <laughs> Crazy. Now, now, what kind of life? What kind of life? Uh, in, uh, how did your mother grow up? For her to be you born know, that way, I don't know. It seems like she had a great one because my grandmother was awesome, but my mother was such a liar that she mm. created stories around her life that. Up until the day she died, I still don't know the truth about who she was and some of the mm. things. But again, I don't blame her because the things that she lied about all happened before the age of 20. And mm. at the age of 20, she got well, at the age of 16, she got involved with a very abusive man who separated her from her family, who mentally, physically, verbally abused her and ended up being murdered in front of all of us just a few years later. My mother was a 22-year-old uh, widow and we witnessed my stepfather's murder in the home. So she was very traumatized from a lot of the things that he did. Um, and she was an abuse victim and hurt people hurt people. Now, your mother didn't kill him, did she? 
No, no. It actually, um, one of our teenage neighbors um, kicked the door in and stabbed him to death in front of us because they had gotten into an argument later that day, uh, earlier that day. And, you know, Finch, that's just another part of our struggle, because who would think that 20 years later, my cousin would divorce her husband and marry my stepfather's murderer in jail? Whoa. You know, that's a struggle my family had to deal with. That's a struggle. You know, it. It's constantly choosing every day to be bigger than the things that are coming your way. Now, I noticed an, uh, a, a very familiar accent. Really? <laughs> oh, you yeah. You think you know where I'm from, huh? You from Baltimore. <laughs> I surely am. <laughs> you know what gave it away? <laughs> what? It was the way you pronounced the word you just you just said before, Q. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, that's Baltimore. It always gives us away, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you sound like Snoop from The Wire. I said, like, that's Baltimore. That's Baltimore. Yep, I know it. It's Baltimore. Yeah, I wasn't going to be wrong on that one. I knew I had that one right. <laughs> Baltimore-based, but we are definitely international. In fact, I taught my international therapeutic writing workshop tonight. I teach a free therapeutic writing workshop uh, via Zoom every Tuesday. Okay. Can anybody get in on that? It sure they sure can. Um, if they go to the link that's on our social media, our Instagram um, at the top, then it'll link them to our therapeutic writing group and all of the other things that we have going on as well. Now you got to tell them what your inst- what that Instagram is because they don't. It's know. stronger than my struggles. Stronger <laughs> than my struggles. Okay. We're on all social media is stronger than my struggles. Well, just use the hashtag. You can't miss us. Okay. All right. So let's give them. Uh, are we giving three or five secrets? What do you want? I'm full of them. Oh, yeah, I can imagine you are full of secrets and recipes. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. Okay. All right. So, so let's start with. Uh, is it going to be a recipe or is it going to be a secret? Yeah, that's a secret too. <laughs> three or five. Mm, let's see here. Let's go with three. Okay, now you never finish the rest of the sentence. You want three secrets or recipes to? I'm going to let you decide on what if it's a secret or recipe, but it's to how to become stronger than your struggle. Awesome. So if you want to be stronger than your struggles, the first thing you have to do is remember that faith works, right? Mm. So faith, and that means any faith, like your faith does not have to be like my faith. You don't have to have the same denomination. We don't have to pray to the same God. You never have to pray. But understanding that your your thoughts, your constant uh, energy towards something can create just that, that you can manifest the things that you want in life by focusing on them, by putting your energy into them. And by constantly moving towards them, we're constantly either doing two things, moving towards something we want or away from something we don't want. That's your choice. Um, Also, I would tell you to let someone in. You know, we want to be strong, but we think that means being alone. And it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Being strong does not mean that you have to be solid and by yourself. That's why I started the Stronger Than My Struggles community. I had been going to see my therapist for seven and a half years. And when I walked in her office one day and she said, I no longer take your insurance and and she just didn't want to see me and there was nothing else I could do about it. I didn't know what to do. I thought my world was going to end. And I realized that I cannot wrap my world up in one person, even if she was a therapist. And that's where the Stronger Than My Struggles community came from. I realized that we needed a community. We needed support. We needed someone to talk to who wasn't getting paid to be there for us. We needed to be able to trust that they just cared. And then also to be stronger than your struggles. Don't be afraid to share your story. It's powerful. Your story Mm -hmm. may heal someone else. It may free someone else. And the people who play parts in your stories, whether they're villains or heroes, that's none of your fault. They're just people in your story. Don't let them keep you from sharing your truth because sharing your truth is going to free you and allow you to become who you're supposed to be. Just like I can easily step on here and say, I know where I come from. I used to be in the streets. I've done porn. But these things were my stepping stones. They were not things that anchored me down. Mm -hmm. They allowed me to be here. And I'm not ashamed of them. Don't ever be ashamed of your story, no matter what happened and where you came from. 
And don't let anyone tell you that it doesn't matter. You want two more? Yeah, before you get to two, though, I want to talk about your community. Yeah. Y'all, y'all have little huts, streets, y'all have <laughs> banks. What, what, what y'all got in this community? Let, well, because we're international, we got everything. You know, over in Nigeria, the ones, they might have a hut. <laughs> I never know. <laughs> but we have this amazing community where we have online support groups. We're on Facebook. You can find us under Writing for My Sanity. Um, we also have a Stronger Than My Struggle support group. We have our Instagram where we're very active. Um, I, again, have a free therapeutic writing workshop every Tuesday, which I've been hosting for four years now. And in that writing workshop, you get free coaching. You get community support. You get someone to bounce your ideas off of. And as of Monday, March 15th, Mm. our community will now have a mental health app. The STMS mental health app drops on Android and iOS on March 15th. And it's the only mental health app where you have your daily journal in your hand and you can upload media so you can put a picture with it or your video with it. Um, You'll be able to read the blogs directly from our website. You'll be able to submit content so that you can share your survivor story or maybe even write for our blog. And so we're just constantly building things for our community to connect and to have a place to reach out and support each other. Okay. Great. So let's recap the first three before we go to the last two. So number one. I hope you were listening because I got mental illness. I don't keep up with my mouth. Do you hear this magic dropping out? It is just magic. Like, how do I keep up with this kind of magic? What, what did you say? Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm just listening to the people. Uh, okay. You weren't keeping up? No. You, th- these did your you tips. write them down? No, I didn't write them down. <laughs> okay. So I th- <laughs> I know that I said share your story because it really matters, right? Number one, you said something about faith. Let's go back. Oh, God, yes. Faith works. That's on your wrist. How can you forget that? Faith works, wrist. right? I know. That's why I keep it here. So I never forget that faith works. It says stronger than my struggles on one side and faith works on the other, right? Um, and then I know I told you to share your story because it matters. It can change someone else's life. And the second one. I don't remember what I said, Fish. It's magic. Like, I mean, dry- oh, that's it. Don't forget that magic happens. Magic. That's not like, what you said. <laughs> it is. We talked about manifestation. We did. We talked about being able to create your own reality. We All right, sure somebody, did. somebody got the answers for us. Faith, share your story. Don't do it alone. Do it alone. Right. The community. See, faith was under manifestation. Okay. You're right. <laughs> Look, they taking notes. Why are you not taking notes, Finch? I'm talking to you. I, I, I can't. I, I'm doing enough jobs right now. I can't do you more. Ask me to take notes too now. Okay. Now, look, these your tips, these Melanie. Two. These are your tips. You should you know these tips. Next two, right? Catch the next two. Okay. Okay. I got the next two. Let, let me, right. let me hit it. You ready? What you drinking? What? Oh, wait, wait. What you got in that bottle? I only drink Evian and Fiji okay. water. Okay, that's water. I'm spoiled and rich. Okay. <laughs> I manifested this life, just so you know. I, I, I bet. All right. So, number four, to be stronger than your struggles. Hmm. Gee. Wake up every day and know that you are. Just that simple. Wake up every day and know that you are. You are whatever you choose to be from day to day. Mm. You have that power. No That's matter good. what people tell you you are, you are what you choose to be. And that can change ah. from day to day. You have that power. Do you believe um, that can change from moment to moment in your day? Believe it or not, because of who I am, I have a mental illness called dissociative identity disorder, which means legally I'm multiple people. And I even get a check from the government for it. I can tell. So because I'm legally multiple people, I surely believe that, you know, anything can change in a matter of seconds. Yes. Yes. I can tell that you are multiple people. (laughs) I've met four of them in this show right here. I believe you. That's why I can't keep up with me. You got to catch this magic, darling. You hear me. (laughs) All right. What's the last one? (laughs) Number five, to be stronger than your struggles. (sighs) Live free. People are going to judge you no matter what you do. They're going to judge you no matter where you come from. They're going to talk about you whether you're doing good or bad. Live free. That is the best way to be stronger than your struggles, just to get up every day like they ain't nothing. And it's just a part of your everyday life because they are. 
struggles are going to constantly come and they're not going to stop coming. And if you beat this one today, tomorrow, another one will catch up with you. That's called life. That's called life. I love it. Melanie, it's been a plum pleasing and a pleasure to have a conversation with you. I know. Yeah. That's what they all say. <laughs> Person number seven just showed up. <laughs> <laughs> and I love your accent. Baltimore, I've, I've only been to Baltimore twice, but um, I, I love how people talk there. It's funny. It's 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 so... It's so uh, unique in its own way. So, yeah. But uh, uh, if people want to connect with you online, how can they do so? Well, they can go to strongerthanmystruggles.com or they can find us on all social media at Stronger Than My Struggles. And my name is Melanie Hill. So you can go to melaniehill.com also. All right. Melaniehill.com. Stronger Than My Struggle. I'm going to be stronger than my struggle in the morning. You better. Yo, 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 yo. You're in the mix. The world's finest, man. DJ. Just now. I have the radio on the telly.